What's up everybody? Uh, this is episode two for uh, the come up. Sorry about the late post and I know I haven't posted in a month but my camera broke and then I went on vacation to Hawaii for two weeks so the camera was just at home. Yeah, you'll be seeing videos probably coming every like four to seven days. For the second episode, we're gonna be doing uh, Devontae Freeman, Atlanta Falcons running back, and we're gonna talk touch on his journey from growing up in Liberty City in Miami to becoming at one point in his career the top earning running back and one of the better running backs in the league. He was born in Georgia, actually, in 1992 to uh, Lorraine and Alfonso. And his actual father wasn't in his life. He had a stepfather, though, who pretty much was his actual dad. After he was born, pretty much his parents split up. His mom moved to Miami, and then he grew up there in Liberty City. So to know for the future, his stepdad's name is uh, Cleveland. He pretty much was the father to Devontae and the, his seven siblings. So in the housing complex that they lived in, in Liberty City, it was called Pork and Beans. And this complex was known for violent crimes, drugs. The area just, it looks very underdeveloped, uh, looks abandoned. Uh, and then growing up in that area, you know, a lot of kids, they go into the crime and they see what, what's all around and they don't really think there's a way out. But Devontae was always like different than the pact and he was just stayed away from all that violence and he really concentrated on football and tried to get out of this situation that he sees all around him. And he never wanted to put his mom in, a, in a, another crappy situation. Like she's already living in that kind of complex. Uh, seeing all this violence, his stepfather was in and out of trouble. Monty didn't want to put more burden on his mom, which is a really respect that. It's really good to see and, and to hear. So, Devontae said that he'd always hear gunshots and see crime every single day in the complex. To the point where he'd be have practice after school and he'd said he had to run home because he would be scared that he'd hear gunshots. He doesn't know where they're coming from, so he run home every single day after practice because he's scared just am I gonna die out here you know what I mean so it's scary and it's just scary for a person to live like that especially like a kid because all he knows now is just poverty what am I what am I eating the next my next meal if I walk outside to get the mail am I gonna get shot it seems like his life was very intense at a very young age and for someone like Devontae to come out of this it just shows like how great a character he has uh, Dwight Jackson he owned a funeral home and Devontae wanted to work there when he was 13. And, uh, Dwight had uh, allowed him to work there and he was there to you know, get some money for himself and for his family. And Dwight said that he'd never met a kid like Devontae, just so into school, into football, just didn't want to get, a, get into the gang violence and all the other troubles that are all in the area. He said that working there, I think, taught Devontae lessons about life. Because, you know, at, at a funeral home, you see all types of dead people. He said that they would, he would see people with their heads shot off, but with body shot, parts shot off, people that have to be, obviously, with closed caskets. Just a lot of, like, really disturbing scenes for, like, a young kid, a 13-year-old, just going to high school to see. And it just showed him, like, don't get into this type of life, it's not good. It's not gonna be beneficial. So just like respects to Devontae on that one. Also, when Devontae was 15 years old, so this is when now he's out in high school, I think grade 10, he goes to a local party in the area with his buddies and a gunfight broke out. He heard bullets everywhere, he said. He said that people were getting shot left, right, and center, like right beside him, everyone was getting shot. A bullet had even completely went his direction and it just missed him, like just missed him by like, um, a centimeter or centimeter, two centimeters. It's just crazy. He ran out of the home, had gone behind this car. He saw an older guy walk out with an AK-47, so a fully like automatic gun, stared at him and just kept on walking. So like, if he killed him, that's it. There's no Devontae Freeman. Like, there's just scare, like, scary situations that happen. He went to Miami Central High School for the first three years, played football there. He didn't start a game, he didn't really play that much, cause he's really, really short. I think he's like 5'8 now, but like in high school he was like 5'3, 5'4, 5'5, he was a really not a tall guy. And then he finally bulked up, put on some weight, earned the starting job his senior year, led his team in, in 2010 to the 6A state championship, was the MVP, rushed for 2,200 yards, 26 TD, so like, he went off. I guess people saw his speed because he's a pretty speedy guy and like most short guys that play running back, obviously they really got up on their shoulders so they're, they're pretty aggressive. He's a bruising back for such a small dude. Um, his whole life he wanted to go to the University of Miami. I guess the commodity, uh, the legacy in, in Miami is just great. You know, Michael Irvin, uh, Warren Sapp, Vinny Testaverde. It's a joke. 
and he wanted to play for the Hurricanes. He ended up committing to FSU though, which is like a complete rival, four-star recruit, and was rated the best running back in the nation at his grade 12 year. But what's funny is the only reason why he was ever noted as a four-star recruit and was rated the best running back was due to the fact that Jimbo Fisher had seen him before his senior season, liked the, what he saw in him, and I have a quote that I want to read about uh, that. Uh, when he saw him and he said that after giving that pretty much changed his life everyone wanted to give him like full scholarships and he got like the, uh, all the offers just rolling in so it's pretty cool to see that so what Jimbo said I'm just reading this off my screen he went through so much adversity with situations at home with his friends getting killed but the perseverance the strength the inner core of him he's a phenomenal genuine human being and one of the finest best human beings I've ever coached so it's just a lot of praise you know from uh, a really like high praise coach in college football. So gets to FSU, plays there from 2011 to 2013, pretty successful year, uh, years there. Freshman season, immediate contributor, which is like pretty like good, especially for a smaller guy, like you can get him around a redshirt year. Rushed for like just, over, just under 600 yards, eight TDs. Not too bad. Sophomore year contributed pretty much around roughly the same, around like 650 yards, 8 TDs. So it's coming up. 2013, he becomes the lead back, but still splits carries with two really good running backs, one in the CFL for the Toronto Argonauts. So he's playing with James Wilder Jr. and Carlos Williams. Rushed for over 1,000 yards, 14 TDs. Helped uh, Jameis get in that 2014 BCS National Championship. I'm a big fan of Jameis, so that's why I'm smiling. So after that season, he thought, okay, screw it, I'm going to the NFL. 2014, rated the eighth best running back in the in that draft. As I said, split carries, so everyone's watching Jameis. However, he does go in the fourth round in the, the draft to the Atlanta Falcons. His first year, don't want to be quoted by this, but I'm pretty sure he backs up Michael Turner as a rookie or no he backs up Steven Jackson as a rookie yeah Steven Jackson second year Steven's gone he goes for over a thousand yards and 11 TDs followed up with another 1,000 yard season then a year after that helped the Falcons win a uh, NFC championship goes to the Super Bowl and we all know the story the 23 comeback they lose they lose the Super Bowl greatest player of all time Tom Brady and the Patriots he's at great production and then after, I'm pretty sure after that Super Bowl, they signed him to a five-year deal. $41 million was the highest paid running back for the time. His last two years haven't been as successful due to injuries, but he can definitely, like, I think this year without Tevin Coleman there, I think he's going to do, he's going to get the bulk of the carries. I think he'll be very well. So just some final comments on Devontae. Spent his childhood in one of the, like, most crime-filled cities in all of the U.S. Violence, drugs, like, just crimes, which was normalized to Devontae. And he saw all that stuff all around him every day, single day that was pretty much his life and, you know his stepfather was in and out of prison so he just felt like a lot of pressure i think as like the eldest of all of his siblings to not just be a bum do any legal things to get by you know he wanted to actually create wealth for his family and, you know provide for his mom and his siblings so that's really good to see and just growing up in that area a lot of people get stuck into that this is the only way but he he didn't think that way ever he always wanted you know he thought football would be his way and his path and it worked out for him so i honestly think gets a shot again this year they got run the ball everyone looks healthy again in Atlanta so I think it's gonna be really good for him just due to him being a successful guy in his first I think 25 26 years of life like you can definitely see he's gonna bounce back from these injuries and can become one of the better running backs again in this league all right uh that's it for the second video like subscribe tell your friends about this video thank you